Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We're at Node Summit 2017 in downtown San Francisco. 800 people hanging out at the Mission Bay Conference Center talking about development and really monumental growth uh, curve. I mean, one of the, the earlier presenters had one project last year, I think 15 this year, 22 in development and another 75 kind of toy projects. So the development curve is really steep. IBM's here, Microsoft, Google. Um, all the big players, so there's a lot of enterprise momentum as well. And we're happy to have our next guest who's really put, who started the show uh, and one of the main sponsors of the show. He's Charles Beeler. He's a general partner at Rally Ventures. Charles, great to see you. Good to be back. Good yeah, to see you. Absolutely. So just kind of general impressions. You've been doing this for a number of years. I think yeah. when we talked earlier, um, Mr. Dahl, Ryan Dahl's uh, interview from, I don't even know what year, so I'll have to look. 2012, January 2012. 2012. Yeah. Still one of our most popular um, interviews of all the thousands we've done on theCUBE, and now yeah. I kind of get it. Like, yeah, you know, we, uh, we got it, right place, right time, but it was, it was initially a lark in 2011. We were talking about Node, seemed like a really interesting project, but no one was really using it in any meaningful way. Uh, Brian Cantrell from, from Joint, who I know you all have talked to right, before, right. Uh, walked me through the Hello World uh, example on our, our board at my office, and, and we decided, let's go for it. Let's see if we can get a bunch of enterprises to come and start talking about what they're doing. So January 2012, uh, there were almost none who were actually doing it, but they were talking about why it made sense. And right. you fast forward you know, to 20, 2017, so HomeAway was the company that actually had no apps, now 15, 22 in development like you were mentioning. And you know, right now on stage you got Twitter, talking about Twitter Lite. The, the breadth, and it's not just the internet companies, and you look at Capital One, you look at some of the, the other big banks and, and true kind of enterprise companies who are using this. Uh, it's, it's been fun to watch. And for us, I mean, we, we do enterprise investing, so it right. fits well, but selfishly, this community's just a fun group of people to be around. So as much as this helps for a rally and things, we just, we've always been in awe of what the, the folks around the Node community have, have meant and try to do. And it, it did start with Ryan and kind of went from there. So right. uh, yeah, it's, it's fun to be back and see it again for it's the fifth annual installment. It's interesting some of the conversations on stage were also too about just kind of community development and community maturation and, and bad, you know, people doing bad behavior, yep. and but yet are technically strong. And we've seen some of these kind of growing pains in some other open source communities. The one that jumps out is is OpenStack, as we've watched yep. that one kind of grow and, and morph over time. So, you know, these are good. There's bad problems and good problems. These are these are good growing yeah, pain and, problems. And it, that's an interesting one because it, you, know, you, you read the latest press about the venture industry and the issues you see there, and people talk more generally about the, the tech industry, and it is a problem. It's a challenge, and it starts with encouraging you know, a broad, diverse group of people to be interested in this business right, right. And, the, and getting into it. And so uh, the, the Node community to me has always been, and I, I think almost any other open source community could benefit from looking at not just how they've done it, but who the people are and, and what they've driven. Um, for us, one of the things we've always tried to do is bring a diverse set of speakers to, to come and get engaged. And it's hard, it's really hard to go and find enough people who have the time and willingness to come up on stage. And it's so rewarding when you start to really expose the breadth of, of who's out there and engaged and doing great stuff with them. Right. Last year we had Stacy Kirk, who uh, she runs a company down in, in LA. Her entire team pretty much is based in Jamaica. Brought the whole team out. Really? And it was so much fun to have. Like, whole new group of people, the community just didn't know, get to know right, them, and, right. and be in awe of what they're building. So yeah, I thought the, electro, the Electron conversation, they were talking about community, that was Jacob um, from GitHub. It's an early community there, they're trying to figure it out. Yeah, on the OpenStack side, it's very corporate driven, it's harder to have those conversations. In the Node community, it's still more community driven, and as a result, they're able to have more of the conversation around how do we build a very inclusive group of people who can, frankly, do a more effective job of, of changing development. Right. So. Well, kudos to you. I mean, you opened the conference in your opening remarks talking about the code of content or code of conduct, and it's it's kind of like good news, bad news. Like, really, we have to talk about what should basically it's be common sense. Common sense, but you know, but you have to do it, and that's yeah. part of the the program. It is Women in Tech Wednesday today, so we've yep. got a boatload of cards going out today with a lot of the women and. You know, it's been proven time and time again that a diversity of opinions tackling any problem is going to lead to a better solution. And hopefully, this is not new news to anybody no, either. And, and you know, we have uh, we have a, a few scholarship uh, folks from Women Who Code over here. We've done that with them for the last few years. But you know, there there's so many organizations that anyone who actually wants to spend a little time figuring out how can I be a part of the I don't know if I'd call it solution, but but help with a, a challenge that we have to face. It's it's Women Who Code. It's Girls Who Code. It's Black Girls Code. 
but it's it's not just women. I mean, there's a broad, diverse set of people we right. need to engage. Right. We have a group here, Operation Code, who's working with veterans who would like to find a career and are starting to become developers. And we have three or four uh, sponsored folks from Operation Code too. And and again, it's just rewarding to watch people who were, were some of the key folks who helped really make Node happen, walking up to some stranger who's sort of staring around, hasn't met anybody, introduce himself, say, hey, what are you interested in, how can I help? Right. And, uh, and it's one of the things that frankly brings us back to do this year after year, it's, uh, it's rewarding. So. Well, it's kind of an interesting piece of what Node is. Again, we keep hearing time and time again, it's an easy language, use the same language for the front end of the back end, yep. use a bunch of pre-configured uh, modules. I think Monica from Intel said, she said that you know a lot of the code they see is 2% is your code and everything else you're leveraging from other people. And we see in all these tech conferences that you know the way to have innovation is to enable more people to contribute that have the tools and the data. And that's really kind of part of what yeah. this whole ethos is here. And making it, I mean, just generally the ethos around making it easier to develop and deploy. And so when we first started, you know, Google was nowhere to be found. Microsoft was actually already here. IBM wasn't here yet. And now you look at those folks, the number of submissions we saw for talk proposals, the depth of engagement within those organizations. Obviously Google's got their go and, and a bunch of other, but Node is a key part of what they're doing. Node on, I think, both uh, for both IBM and also for Google is the most deployed, you know, language or but it's the most deployed stack in terms of what they're seeing on their cloud, yeah. um, which is why they're here and they're seeing just continued growth. So yeah, it, it drives that view of like, how can we make software easier to work with, easier to put together, create and deploy. And it's right. fun to watch you know, erstwhile competitors sitting, comparing notes and ideas. And, and someone said to me, one of the Google folks, Miles Borens, had said, you know, I, I, mostly I love coming to this because the hallway chatter here is just always so fascinating. Right, right. So you go hear these great talks and you walk out and the speakers are there, you get to talk to them and, and, and really learn from them. So. so I want to shift gears a little bit. Always yeah. great to get a venture capitalist on it. Everybody wants to hear you know, your thoughts and you see a lot of stuff come across you know, your desk. As, as you just <laughs> look at the constant crashing of waves of innovation that we keep going through here, and I know that's part of why you live here and yep. why I do too. And you know, cloud clearly is, is probably past the, the peak of the wave, but we're just coming into IoT and Internet of Things and, and, and 5G, which is going to be, you know, start to mm -hmm. hit in the near future. As you look at it from an enterprise perspective, you know, what's getting you excited? What are some of the yeah. things that maybe people aren't thinking about that are less obvious? And, and really, you know, the, the uh, adoption of enterprises, of these cutting edge technologies, of getting involved in open source is really a phenomenal kind of environment Absolutely. for startups. Yeah, and so and what you're seeing is as the companies, I mean, the, the original enterprises who were interested in Node who decided to start deploying, the next question is, all right, this worked, what else can we be doing? And this is where you're seeing the advent of, so first cloud, but now how people are thinking about deployment. You know, so there's a lot of conversation here this week about serverless. Right. So right, right. we were talking about containers, microservices, and next thing you know, people are saying, well, okay, let's, what, what else can we be doing to kind of push the boundaries around this? So from our perspective, what, what we think about when we think of enterprise and, and sort of infrastructure and, and you know, DevOps, et cetera, is it, it is an ever-changing thing. So yeah, cloud as we know it today is sort of, it's done but it's not close to being finished in right. when you think about how people are making, creating apps, deploying them, how that keeps changing, questions they keep asking. But also now, to your point, when you look at 5G, when you look at IoT, the deployment methodology, they're going to have to change, right? The development languages are going to change, and, and that will, once again, result in further change across the entire infrastructure of how am I going to go deploy it? So I, I would say that we, we have not stopped seeing innovative stuff in any of those categories. Uh, you asked about where do we see kind of future things that we like. I, I, like any VC, if I don't say AI and ML, and what are the other ones I'm supposed right, to say? Right. Um, <laughs> virtual reality, augmented reality. <laughs> drones obviously are yeah. huge. Um, no, it's anti-drone. <laughs> yeah, sorry, no drone drones. Drone detection. <laughs> so we, we look at those as enabling technology. Uh, we're more interested from a rally perspective in an applied use of those technologies. So uh, there's some folks from Grail Bio here today. And uh, if you, I'm sure you know Grail, right? They raised the billion dollars. And the first question I asked to the VP was here, I said, did you cure cancer yet? Because it's been like a year and a half. <laughs> right? They haven't yet, sorry. Shoot. But um, what's really interesting is when you talk to them about what are they doing? So first they're using Node. 
but the approach they're taking to try to make their software get smarter and smarter and smarter about the stuff they see either change. It's just fundamentally different than things people were thinking about a few years ago. So for us, the applied piece is we want to see companies like a Grail come in and say, here's what we're doing, here's why, and here's how we're going to leverage all of these enabling technologies to go accomplish something that no one has ever been able to do before. Right, right. And, and that's what gets us excited. I mean, the idea of, of artificial intelligence, it's cool, it's great, I love talking about it. Walk me through how you're going to go do something compelling with right, that. Right. Blockchain is an area that we're spending, have been, but continue to spend a lot of time looking around, not so much from a currency perspective, it's just very compelling technology, and the, bro the breadth of applicability there is incredible. And we've met in the last week, I met four entrepreneurs, there's three of them over here, talking about just really novel ways to take advantage of a technology that is still just kind of early stages from our perspective of getting to a point where people can really deploy right. within large enterprise. And then I'd say the final piece for us, and it's not a new space, but uh, you know, kind of sitting over all of this is security. And as, as these things change constantly, the security needs are going to change, right? The footprint in terms of what the attack surface looks like, it gets bigger and bigger, right, right. it gets more complex, and the, the unfortunate reality of simplifying the development process is you also sometimes sort of move out the security thought process from a developer perspective, from a deployment perspective. You assume, I mean, I've heard companies say, well, we don't need to worry about security because we keep our stuff in Amazon. Right, right. It, 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 I, from a, as a security investor, I love hearing that. Right. As a user of some of those solutions, it scares me to death. And so we see this constant evolution there. And what's interesting, you have, today I think we have five security companies who are sponsoring this conference. Right? I mean, it, the first few years, no one even wanted to talk about security. And you have five different companies who are here, right, right. really talking about why it matters if you're building node apps and deploying in the cloud, like what you should be thinking about from a security perspective, so. The security is so interesting because, um, to me, it's kind of like insurance, right? How much is enough? Mm -hmm. and, and ultimately, you could just shut everything down and close it off, but that's not the solution. So, you know, where's the happy medium? And, and the other thing that we hear over and over is, right, is it's got to be baked in all the layers of the cake. It can't just be, you know, the, the, the castle and moat methodology Absolutely. anymore. So, how much do you have? Where do you put it in? It, but, but, but where do you stop? Because ultimately, it's like insurance. You could just keep buying more and more and more. Yeah, and, and recognizing the irony of sitting here in San Francisco while Black Hat's taking place, and we should both be out there talking about it too. But <laughs> well, no, because you can't go there with your phone, your laptop. Is it, you, you, now you're just is, supposed to bring your car. This anymore. is the first year in four years that my son won't be at DEF CON. He, <laughs> he just turned seven. So he set the record at four, five, and six as the youngest DEF CON attendees. A little bitter we're not going this year, but. Um, and shout out because he was first place in the kids capture the flag last year oh, until he decided good. to leave and go play video games. <laughs> but um, no, it, it, so the way we think about the question you just asked on security is, um, and this is actually, I give a lot of credit to Art Coviello. Art was, he's one of our venture partners. He was uh, the CEO at RSA for a number of years, ran okay. it post, uh, post EMC acquisition as well is what, it's, it's not so much of a, okay, I've got this issue. It could be pay it, ransomware, whatever it is. People come in and say, well, we solved that. The answer, you might solve the problem today, but you don't solve the problem for the future typically. The question is, what is it that you do in my environment that, that covers a few things? One, how does it reduce the time and energy my team needs to spend on solving these issues so that I can use them? Because the, the, the people problem in security is huge. Right. And if you can reduce the amount of time people are doing automated, what could be automated tasks, manual tasks, and instead get them focused on higher order bit stuff, you get to cover more. So how does it reduce the, the stress level for my team? What do I get to take out so, I, great, I don't have an unlimited budget. I'm not just going to keep buying you know, point solutions. What is it that you will allow me to replace so that the net cost to me to add your solution is actually neutral or negative so that I can simplify my environment? And again, going back to making it easier for the people. Right, right. And then what is it that you do beyond claiming that you're going to solve the problem I have today? Walk me through how this fits into the future. They're not a lot of the Thousands Those are not of, easy questions. They're not easy questions, and so when you ask that and apply that to every company who's a black hat today, every company at RSA, there's not very many of the companies who can really answer that in a concise way. And you talk to CISOs, those are the questions they're starting to ask. Great, I love what you're doing. It's not a question of whether I have you in my budget this year or next. What do I get to do in my environment differently that makes my life easier, my organization's life easier, and ultimately nets it out at a lower cost? So, and, and we, so it's a theme we've been investing, about 25% of our investments have been in the security space, okay. and I, I feel like so far, every one of those deals uh, fits in, the, in, this, in some way in that category. Um, we'll see how they play out, but you know, so far, so good. Yeah. 
Well, very good. So before we let you go, just a shout out, you know, I think we talked before, you sold out of sponsorship, so people that want to get involved yeah, with Node, yeah, 2018, they better get, uh, step up pretty soon. 2018 uh, will happen. It's the earliest we've ever confirmed and announced next year's <laughs> conference. It usually takes me five months before <laughs> to I'm willing recover. to think about it again. Uh, it'll happen, it'll probably happen within the same one week time frame, two week time frame. I, I actually, as uh, someone put a ticket tier up for next year where if you buy tickets during the conference, the next two days you can buy a ticket, I don't know, $395. Right, and I right. think for today, they're a thousand bucks. So it's a good deal if people want to go. But you know, it, the nice thing is we've never, uh, we've never had a team that outreaches to sponsors. It's always been inbound interest, people who want to be involved. And uh, it's made for, it's made the entire thing just a lot of fun to be part of. Yeah. But yeah, we'll do it next year. And you know, it'll be really fascinating to see how much additional growth we see since between now and then, because based on some of the enterprises we're seeing here, I mean, true Fortune 500, nothing to do with technology right, from a, right. a, a revenue perspective, they just use it internally. You're seeing some really cool development taking place, and we're going to get some of that on stage next year. So Good, well congrats on a great event. Thanks, and thanks for being here. It's oh, always absolutely. fun to have you guys. All right, he's Charles Beeler, I'm Jeff Frick. You're watching theCUBE, Node Summit 2017. Thanks for watching.